Hello and welcome to another episode of Tutorial Thursdays. This is going to be a special holiday edition. We're going to focus on what is very important in winter, which is layers. Layers is a powerful concept in Trendminer, but it can be a little bit hard to get started with it. And today we're going to show you three ways in which you can create layers in different ways. The first way will be manually, based on information that you already have. The second way will be based on views you have created before that you can add as layers to your view. And the third and final way is adding layers from your searches. That being said, let's dive in. All right, as mentioned, we will use three different ways of adding layers to our uh, trend hub views to use them for later analysis. And the first one is quite simple. We're just going to add a manual layer. Basically, we will get the time range from some other source and we'll use that to create a new layer that uh, adds to our base layer. So in this example, I'm using, for example, an extract of my limb system where I have all of this, uh, this batch data. Uh, can also be campaign data or, um, for example, raw material data. And I already added a filter and I'm going to look for good periods, which means that my batches are typically higher than 75. So I'm going to use some of Excel's capabilities here and add this filter higher than 75. And perhaps I'm also looking particularly at industrial grade batches, which leads me to a total of about 18 records uh, of a total of 120 in my data set. So if I want to add one of these batches now to my layer, um, uh, let's just grab the first one. This would be the 27th of um, March in 2019 at 1.12 in the morning. So that's what I'm going to add. So going back into my trend hub view, I'm going to navigate over to the layers menu. So this is where it becomes uh, relevant. I'm going to add a layer by clicking the plus. And what it's going to do is going to align this to the current date. That's, of course, not what I want. So I'm going to use the date picker to go back into March uh, 2019. I believe we were talking about the 27th, indeed. So the 27th of March at 1 a.m. in the morning. So 1.12 is what I would add here. And there we go. So now I've added this new layer and of course there might be a bit of a of a time discrepancy between what is recorded in the batch system and what is actually my time series data so if i wanted to i can click on the layer itself to highlight it to see a little bit better where it is and i can use the arrows to align it to perfection to where i want to be there we go so at 214 uh, that batch seems to be properly aligned now probably there's like one hour of dead time when the reactor is still loading that's possible and I can use these features in Trendminer to very clearly align. By the way, I can also go into Stacked Trend to uh, see every tag uh, a little bit more in detail. So that's easy for me if I want to retain the overview. That's very simple. Way number one, create a manual layer based on other information. For example, some batch records it could also be, for example, if you have a continuous um, process where every day you record your production rates, that's probably locked somewhere as well in an Excel sheet. You can grab that information and use it to create your manual layers. Of course, is this something that you find yourself doing quite often? Don't forget that you can also import this information right into Trendminer, into Context Hub, and then use that to your advantage. So that's something I just want to mention here if you're interested in that. There's a couple of previous tutorial Thursdays that you can use to figure out how to do that. All right, that being said, let's have a look at the second way of adding layers, which is building on the same team. But for example, if I've done this a couple of times, Perhaps I don't want to do this over and over and over. So if I have a layer or I have a view with a couple of layers and just out of uh, um, continuity, I'm going to use this view and I'm going to save it. So I'm going to go into my views menu and I'm going to save this view as a tutorial Thursday reference layers. Whether these are the best layers or not doesn't really matter. But for the example, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to hit save. And what I'm going to do is create a new view based on the same tag. So I'm going to remove these layers right here. And I'm going to pick another time period. It doesn't really matter where, uh, but just something that looks quite similar. For example, this batch right here. And let's say this is a batch that I in particular want to investigate uh, compared to those two batches that I had on my view before. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. Um, what I would do, and this is the second way of adding layers, is basically adding a view 
but only as layers. So what does that mean? If I go into my saved view menus, I still have this uh, reference layers that I just saved. If I were to escape out of it, I would hit saved views. It's going to open my work organizer and I will select that same view, the reference layers, hit select. And instead of loading the view itself, which is typically what you do probably 95% of the time, I can actually select only load layers. And what that's going to do is it's going to retain the view I have and just add what I had on that other view, that saved view as an individual layer. And when I hit load, it's now added two new layers to my view. You see, I had my original layer and then I have the two that I've been adding through my view. And as you can see, they're all very close to one another, not a lot of uh, difference there. So that's the second way to add layers. It's also quite manual, but it's basically based on work you've done before that you want to reuse in your analysis. Very typical if you have, for example, some reference layers that are going into a golden batch fingerprint, for example, but you want to compare to what you have today. That's quite relevant. Similarly, if you want to compare shutdown startups to previous runs, um, you can just basically grab a view today, right? You use the live mode and you align it to today. And then you add previous layers by uh, loading the layers from a saved view that you have created before. So conceptually quite simple. And that's what we wanted to show you here today is how you can do that in practice. That was way number two. Now way number three is a little bit more advanced or at least more flexible. And that is adding layers through the search results, which is again something that can be quite powerful if you tie it into other activities like you create some uh, formulas that create, for example, an important KPI. And then you do a search on that KPI. From there, I want to start adding layers. And to show you that, I will load a new view. I'm going to load a view here that shows me my pump operations, for example. And this is um, some data that is very continuous in nature. So it, it's quite relevant to start looking this at this um, as a scatter plot. And what you'll see once this uh, view has loaded is that there are a number of periods with very good correlation, or at least this period I have selected here has very good correlation. And that can be something I want to search for. Whenever this correlation is broken in my pump, uh, or, or I mean the correlation in my data points is broken, probably something's going on with my pump. So what I want to demonstrate here is if I were to load this particular XY diagram, um, I'm going to perform one of our searches, which is the area search or the operating area search. Uh, quite powerful because it's so simple, um, but um, you, can, you can achieve quite a lot with it. What it does is basically it allows you to draw an area on the screen. So I'm going to do that like this. So I'm just clicking. And that was a mistake by me. So let's do that again. Just by clicking around, I can define an operating area like this. And when I double click, I'm going to save that uh, that area. And now I can perform a search. And in this case, I'm interested for periods when I'm outside of what I've drawn here. So for example, if I'm outside of this for at least two hours, that is something that I'm interested in. And those are periods I want to compare. So when I hit search, it's going to take a second, I get 37 individual results. So this is something that happens uh, more often. I'm not going to dive into the troubleshooting today, but for me as a process engineer, this would be something like, uh, hmm, that's that's quite uh, quite weird. But what I will do instead is just demonstrate how I can start adding layers from these results. So the first thing I typically do is I will just select one. That's going to be my base layer. And you see, indeed, I'm outside of that uh, drawn hull. And then from here, I can start adding additional results. So by clicking those little... Um, there's a little layer icon with a plus. That's how I add multiple layers from search results. Of course, I'm still in the scatter domain, so I'm not going to immediately see all the results, but I've now added in total four layers. So I have one base layer and three additional layers. If I now go back into the stack trend mode, you will see indeed that I have selected multiple, uh, multiple layers to my view from where if I wanted to, I can start troubleshooting by, for example, looking at the compare table, looking for um, anomalies in, in my data set here. But just to demonstrate this third way of working from a search, we've already covered searches quite extensively in previous Tutorial Thursdays, but once you have those searches, I can use that to add multiple layers to my view. So that's quite powerful in the sense that um, with just a couple of clicks, I've selected all my reference periods, and now I can start really diving in into the troubleshooting part of my analysis. There we have it, three simple but effective ways to get started with layers. The first way was to add a ma uh, layer manually. 
The second way was to create a layer based on a view you had saved before. And then the third and final way was to create layers from your searches. Hope you enjoyed that and hope you enjoyed all Tutorial Thursdays in 2020. From myself and the whole Trendminer team, happy holidays and hope to see you in 2021.